Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk 1943, the Business Spotlight Edition. Today is a fabulous day and a fabulous guest that I have on today. You're going to find out about us and how we connect and a lot of things that's going on with him, Mr. David. So we'll get right back to him. So until let's talk. We are back. We are back. So let me do a formal introduction of David Sandy. All right. Yeah. So industry ambassador, a founder of Casa Sant Santi. I just said it right. Yes. A pure design, award-winning designer, a gifted vocalist. We're going to talk about that as well. And he has a company called Strickland Santi as well. And we're going to get into all of that that goes with that. So welcome, David Sandy. Regina, I am so excited to be here. I can't believe our, you know, after all this time, years gone by, you and I back together again. I know. I know. We spent many years together every morning, jump starting <laughs> our, through our uh, high school and middle school years. You yes. Woven into the fabric of my daily life. <laughs> I know. Isn't it funny? Well, as y'all see, I've known David for over 35 years, literally like over 35 years and we're only in the same whole room from junior high to high school so many mornings <laughs> we see each other every morning for many years <laughs> so i'm so happy and i'm just blessed to have you on my show but since then he has blossomed into this amazing he always been amazing but his um industry and everything he's going into it's been amazing so we're going to kind of like chop it up and get everything in because i want to make sure we touch every part of you david so let's just start with um let's start with george to the rescue let's okay that's that. a great that's a great start <laughs> all right let's start with that so. so you know george to the rescue came um in into my life serendipitously through uh uh kitchen a uh, kitchen fabricator mm -hmm. uh john stark out in uh in long island and um he was approached by the producers of the show to recommend a designer mm -hmm. and lo and behold he recommended me to the show and i ended up uh talking with the producers and one thing led to another mm -hmm. and i had my first rescue and george of the rescue is on nbc it's an emmy award-winning show that rescues families in need mm -hmm. and families that contribute to their communities and put everyone else first before themselves. And that's what I love about that show because it's about helping others. It's not just a designer show. And it was funny because I just happened to watch it one day and I saw you, I was like, that's David. <laughs> <laughs> I just know, it was like, I mean, it was just like, I was watching one day and I was like, wait a minute, is that David? And I heard you say, I said, yep, that's David. I, I mean, it's amazing. Like I said, the show is always giving back. It's a community-based show and it has a little design in it. So I, I love that about the show. It, it is. And, you know, it, for me, it's given me a platform to be able to utilize my talents that I've acquired through my evolution as a designer mm -hmm. and to give back. You know, my first rescue was an immigrant carpenter uh, that worked really hard in his community and he just put himself second. And we did a rescue for his basement mm -hmm. and his family. And we amped it up with, you know, changing the roof and the, and the siding and the windows. And it was just next level next level um and most recently i had a rescue in west hampton long island for uh the connors thomas is an autistic child okay. and, and beth connor mrs connor um you know she's the queen of the family taking care of her family mm -hmm. and and putting all of them first and they had um a bedroom that was not being utilized to its maximum and needed updating and also a master bedroom so again uh -huh. The rescue is always about the cause, and we always try to give, amp it up, and give an extra bonus. So the master bedroom was the bonus that you have here pictured, and I wanted to give them a place of sanctuary, a place where they wake up and go to sleep every day, a, a tranquil space so they can deal with all of their daily activities as they do. 
I love it. And I love, like you said, because the colors are just like, you got pop of color, but it's really like relaxing. Yeah. It's, it's not too loud, loud, but not boring. It's like a nice soothing place to go every day. Yeah. I call the, the, the concept, the idea of it is hospitential. The, oh. the marriage of hospitality and residential, you know, when we go away to a bed and breakfast or a hotel, mm -hmm. you always have that, that sense of simplicity, tranquility, mm -hmm. escape. And why not have that in your own home? That's true. That's why a lot of people like to go to hotels because it exactly. gives you that feeling. Yeah. Good I, point. Some, I of like that. Best, some of the best places I've ever slept in or had the best sleep was in a hotel just because it's, it's a disconnect from the hustle and bustle of the game of the daily life that we do. Um, mm -hmm. So when I'm in a hotel, I just, I have really good sleep. So that's where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good point. That is a good point. So we, okay. So we got, we got this now let's go to the next thing I want to talk about is the um, Donna Drake show. So Donna Drake, Donna Drake is, um, she's a national talks uh, show host, but it's concentrated here in the New York Metro area. She's mm -hmm. been in the industry for well over 10 years, especially with her show. Mm -hmm. And I came to be a part of it through design and consulting for the set. And one thing led to another between the chemistry that we had mm -hmm. and the work we were doing for the, sh for the show. And um, through that initial set design concept, she said, David, I'd love for you to be part of the show. We can talk design. We can talk lifestyle. So she created a correspondent position for me. Wow. That had a longevity well over three years and then we brought on sponsors um for the show as well but the furniture that, that you see there was all designed by my yours truly strictly oh. santi my strictly santi trademark and brand um and you know it's the beginning of what's to come with my furniture as specific specifically mm -hmm. for uh upholstery and seating that is a beautiful that's a beautiful set yeah it I really love is the color i love it that is up and, and uh, i'm like i need one of those <laughs> we, all need, we all need a little tiger or a zebra but you i know, know. The, what i loved about uh, working with with donna and the show was this uh the trust factor of taking mm -hmm. it to the next level of trusting me to do this really cool neutral navy animal print for a show that everyone looks good on you know, from, mm -hmm. you know, from a young kid to a football player and everyone and every, anything in between, everybody looks good on, on that, that seating. So yeah. Donna. <laughs> and you're good with the pop of color. Always. It has always. like the, the tone of like earthy around and then it's like pop. <laughs> yeah. I'm not afraid of color. You know, I'm not afraid of color and I love working with neutrals. And I've always said to um, my clients that I work with, you know, you don't need me for beige. You need me for champagne and pearlescence. The mm. essence of those neutrals, just to amp it up. That's true. Yeah. That's so true. So now we have the George to the Rescue. Now we have the Donna Drake show. So let's move on to your wallpaper. Oh my goodness. Yay. Um, so yeah, color, right? <laughs> and yeah. So, you know, again, in my business, I was always known for my application of, of wallpaper. I use wall covering or wall wallpaper wall covering on almost every single job. No one says no to me, as I've always said. So well, I was um, always being approached, when are you gonna have your own wallpaper collection? And it always stayed on my mind. And through my travels, when I was in Venice, Italy, mm. I saw the iron window grids and the doors of old Italian, you know, iron work. Mm -hmm. and, the patterns in there spoke to me and suddenly I saw these two S's that are basically my signature, Strictly Santi. Yeah, 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 From sure. that wanderlust of a, of a vacation and eye candy, um, the collection was born. And then I brought it back home and Ricardo, my art director, um, really helped me modify and create this pattern that is e easily um, adjustable and and relatable in so many different ways because we could also customize it to a logo. But the point to all of this was I wanted something that had a graphic element and color and was mm -hmm. true to who I was. So we introduced New York City, the Flatiron District, the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, mm -hmm. um, the Cloisters for the Old World Charm, and it certainly um, 
San Juan, old, old, old world charm with yeah. lots of vibrancy, you know, with, for my cultural heritage in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, I mean, just alone, I just love it because I, I love like blacks and whites and grays. I love that. And, and we that were able, we were able to take this pattern and we modified it and we transferred it to fabric for the first time and onto furniture and window treatments for the George of the Rescue show. So stay tuned. We got fabric coming, window treatments, and upholstered bedding as well. Ooh. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. That's going to be the bomb. I can't wait to see that. So let's look. This is your life, David. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing we're going to talk about is your lighting. 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 Oh, my gosh. I love you, Regina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... This happened again serendip serendipitously through the work that I do and the brands that I collaborate with. Mm -hmm. American Brass and Crystal were they were working on a particular collection and they asked my opinion about a particular fixture. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why are you doing that? I don't come to you for that. Uh, I'm not gonna come to you for that. I'm not gonna buy that, buy that from you. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. And they're like, well, what would you do? I said, what would I do? I probably would do something with color. That's what mm -hmm. I'm known for. And they're like, well, we don't do color i'm like well i do you're asking me let's do color and they're like okay why don't you do it for us and that's simple regina that's how it started really so the conversation of this new direction that they wanted to go in i ended up collaborating with them and infusing color into traditional and transitional fixtures that to this day three years going strong i uh, i eventually started designing my own fixtures and continue the licensing and we're going to introduce about five to seven new fixtures coming this January in Ooh. Dallas for light evasion. Really? Yeah. I can't wait. I got to see the pictures because I saw those, the colors, just the, the bright colors. I never seen it. Think about it. Like you may see it somewhere in like, like a hotel or something right. like that, but in a home, you never saw a fixture with, usually you see that's the basic brass or the metals. Right. You never see color in those. So and that's, that's, what I, that's what I always say to my clients, you know, um, it doesn't, you don't always have to stay in the, in the lane of standard or, or normalcy. Don't be afraid of taking, bringing color into a space. I've done Navy blue fixtures in entryways. I've done chocolate Brown in mm. bedrooms, delicious Brown. I'm doing now, um, specifying orange concerts for a hotel. You know, it's also, again, that hospitential vibe, bringing mm -hmm. that hospitality feel into your home and not you doing the literal thing of a pink light for a young girl's room, but bringing mm -hmm. that pink light and turning it into fuchsia and putting it into a, a woman's dressing room. You know what I mean? Yes. And making yeah. it sexy and chic. Yes, that's 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 nice. I like that. <laughs> so we're going to um, hold on one second. Go ahead and get that off. You're so so okay. we'll come back. And well, what I want to talk about next is your amazing opera career. Let's talk. Oh, wow. You are covering all the T's and the I's, aren't you? You're not missing, girl. <laughs> I ain't missing nothing. No, opera. no, no, no. Regina's not missing a beat. Look, next. I do my homework. Next. <laughs> okay. So, you know, music. Let's see. When we were in high school, we did a musical. I'll never forget for wor with working with Mrs. Walker. Um, yeah. We did The Yellow Brick Road. Yes. I, I did it. Um, oh my God, who was in that? I was with Isaac. Remember Isaac? Yes, Isaac was in the great dancer. I remember. Right. So that was my first taste in musicals and also singing in church. Truly, I, that's where I sang in church. Mm -hmm. Resurrection Baptist Church in Dumont, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And um, I never really, I wasn't a singer, Regina. I went to, to school. I, you know, I came back to New York and I studied theater um, at HB Studios. And fast forward. Uh, my friend's younger sister was doing a musical at their mm -hmm. school, and it was uh, Calamity Jane. And she told her music teacher about me that I was some actor studying acting, and I was a serious actor, and I was interested in this play or mu musical, which not really, it wasn't true, but I got a call from her teacher. And she's like, I heard you want to audition for a musical. And I said, I do? <laughs> so I did. So I drove out to Creskill. And I sang for her. And I honestly, Regina, I wasn't a singer. I was, you know, in a certain range. And I sang happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. And she played back. She's like, do you read music? I said, I don't. And 
she played the first couple of bars of the song mm -hmm. and it was my love is higher than a hawk and i sang it back just like that by ear and she's like okay you're our wild bill hickok i'm like what <laughs> you're like what what <laughs> so that's truly the beginning of my step in music so i did this musical she said i'm going to coach you through it you're going to be great don't worry it's not difficult music it's a role for an acting singer not a singing actor and there's oh. a difference okay so after that show was done i've had wonderful mentors also in my journey regina she's been one of them mm -hmm. and uh linda farius said to me you know you've got to go study music you've got to go study voice i'm going to get you started but I'm going to research and find some programs for you. And that's how I started. Oh. I, I went to Mattis uh, College of Music at that time, and they had an extensive program. And I took basic courses, how to read music, ear training, theory, and voice. And within six months of me doing that, the voice teacher that I was studying with there, Lois Winter, said to me, you know, David, you've got something. You should consider auditioning for our program. I'm like, what program? She's like, the voice, classical voice. I said, I just want to be a triple threat, actor, dancer, singer. She's like, no, 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 you've got something. I said, fine, if you prepare me, I'll do it. Boom. So I think it was 12 months later or less than a year later, I auditioned for the program, passed. I got a full scholarship. I was like, oh my gosh. And I became a voice major. And not ever thinking I was going to be an opera singer, Regina. I just thought I was going to be classically trained. But mm -hmm. through classical training, you acquire the knowledge of early music, 17th to 18th century music, art songs, and so forth. And I developed uh, a passion for opera. Mm -hmm. My voice started changing. And voila, I graduated from Madison Territory of Music. Um, I ended up getting an acting position with New York City Opera. And I was with that company for 10 years while I was in school and worked my way up through the company. Wow. And I've never looked back. I've had the luxury of being mentored and, uh, you know, being with the right people at the right time, saying you got something. And I never forget that journey. I would do it all over again because I never thought I would have been an opera singer if you would have told me in high school or after mm -hmm. high school. I thought I was going to be an actor. I, I, I thought I was going to be like, you know, a 21 Jump Street or something. <laughs> you like he, he thought I was going to be you know what I mean? I was like, that's where I thought I was going to be. So I age on that one. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so music became, you know, parallel to my, my journey. Mm -hmm. I never gave up my interior design and which we'll talk about, I'm sure, mm -hmm. um, as my trade and my industry, my work, mm -hmm. because I was always given a strong work ethic from my parents, specifically my mother. Um, I always, I've been working since I was 12 years old, girl. <laughs> and yes, I, I know. This life of duality. So I had my trade, which was design, and my passion and the music and educate and education was music. Mm -hmm. yeah, and exactly. to this day, mm -hmm. um, I'm still singing. The career has ebbed and flowed throughout the years. Um, but around 2014, I ended up wanting to really pursue it. And I did opera after opera down in Philadelphia and here in New York and did some regional work, stage, mm -hmm. concert, and it just blossomed up until Carnegie Hall. And now I'm singing for the company here in New York after that's a cello. Mm -hmm. And I can go on and on, but I'll let you go. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm this, you know, it's funny how you know a person, you know, younger in life and you never see this. Like we, I would never saw this for me. Like this would never have been me. I, it's amazing. I just want to in awe because you have done so much and you're really perfecting everything you do. You know how some people just do things, right? Like you're perfecting everything you do. You know, you're just not touching stuff. You're actually putting the work in and getting skin in the game on everything. Absolutely. You know, I call that, I definitely have my share of sweat equity. You know, mm -hmm. you know, the struggle is real. The hustle is real. The game. I never gave that up. Um, I pretty much have been this kind of energy and personality that I, as far as I can remember, but mm -hmm. it definitely came probably post high school. But I, you know, I knew that I was going to do something creatively mm -hmm. Th that I knew. I just didn't know who I was and uh -huh. I found myself through the journey yes, and right. the journey is where it's led me to today. And I still feel like I've got so much more to do and want to do. 
and I keep saying yes when I should be saying no, <laughs> and things like that. Like yourself, you've evolved, mm -hmm. and look where you're look what you're doing right. with the talk show and and the topics and you know as I say, paying it forward. You know, you're a strong woman in business, supporting and talking about all different types of topics, and it's a it's a type of outreach. Let mm -hmm. yet also media and entertainment. You have a wonderful platform here, Regina, and I kudos oh, to you. you. And I, I'm thank privileged you. to be here with you. That we're here sharing our journeys together and growing together. Yes, we are. We're gonna definitely do that because uh, yes. that's why I said that this is the divine order. I believe in that. I believe I in divine too. order, and I believe that everything's for a reason. Reason in the season, right? So Amen. Meant to be. So this is great. So now we're talking about what you just said, community. Let's get into that. So yes. not just doing all of this, but you do have something that you do to give back to the community and something that you really, really have, like it's in your heart. So you want to tell us what you do? Sure. I mean, right now, um, over the past two years, um, I recently got involved with an organization called My Face, mm -hmm. and they've been around... I want to say I think it's over 70 years and um, you know they the mission is, is somewhat about transforming lives and mm -hmm. helping the facial cranial community and it's anything from a baby a newborn baby with a cleft lip to many different types of, of, of facial uh, deformities syndromes and all of that and procedures and mm -hmm. I came to it again serendipitously through music and design one of my clients who's involved with the organization um, said to me, you know, David, we're doing this talent show. Last year, the kids did a talent show and it was all music. We had instrumentalists and singers. And I'm like, what? Um, tell me more. And he's like, I would love for you to be involved with it. You know, you're great with kids. You love music. My kids love you. And they do. I'm Uncle David. And I'm like, sure. So I checked out, you know, the talent show that they did. I'm like, oh, my gosh. These kids were no joke. And I was touched and humbled. Music is the commonality throughout the world. Music brings people together. Yes, music it heals. Um, it doesn't matter. Music music doesn't know color, doesn't know nationality, culture. It just it unifies us together. So I thought, all right, this is the good Lord above doing his work. Mm -hmm. And I want to be involved. So I got involved mentoring. Um, mentoring one of the students when I, and I invited my accompanist David Mayula who does a lot of my, my piano work to get involved and I mm -hmm. mentored uh, this young girl named Claudia that changed my life from uh, from a zoom session with her like I'm talking to you today mm -hmm. meeting her in person to this event I was just completely transformed myself in touch and I said I need to do more and I want to be part of this so since then I became the artistic director of my face celebrates mentoring more young kids and talents um and also a board trustee of the company and i'm just going wow. to utilize this energy that i have my <laughs> love of music and my love of people and and kids and just supporting uh, and you know giving back i don't know how far it's going to take me but i'm on i'm on that i'm on it yesterday we had a mentor session with uh five kids there's an event coming up in September called Races for Faces, like a 5K walk mm -hmm. that we're going to do in New York. And I was mentoring the kids. We're going to do the Star Spangled Banner. We were harmonizing. And it oh. was just, I was in, I was in awe. And <laughs> look, I smiled because it brings me so much joy to be able to give back. And it's about that. I just give mm -hmm. and the return reveals itself. Um, and that's what I always say, David, I always say, when you're sad, when you're lost, when you don't know who you are, when you, whenever you get through that, just first thing, just give, just go back and give to someone who's less unfortunate and everything works itself out. Yeah. Because when you do that, you notice, first of all, A, your problem is not as big as you think it is. Right. Okay. B, <laughs> you're going to be, just like you said, you're going to smile. And when you smile, you're gracious. And when you're gracious, you realize that you do have, and you see all your gratitude start happening. That solves everything. So do that. If you lost, the first thing you need to do is go find a uh, homeless shelter, a food bank, any kind of organization that you have, do it. And that would change everything. Because you, you start thinking like, wow, I thought my problem was bad. It's not nearly as bad as this. 
and I'm able to help this person. That's all that matters. You hit it when you said that. It makes you smile. It really does. And I do it and I don't think about it. I mean, I'm a yes sir. And sometimes, like I said, I say yes too fast. But, <laughs> you know, I truly believe in being a gardener and sometimes being the rose. You mm -hmm. know, every once in a while, we need that. I need to be the rose. But mm -hmm. I'm truly a gardener in life. Mm -hmm. And um, it brings me joy to be able to do that. Even when I don't have, I still give. You know, I, I say to people, I don't necessarily have a, I'm not a rich man, but I have a rich life, Regina, mm. because of the things that I do and who I do it with, what we're doing today, talking and sharing, this brings me joy because our stories, our journey, someone's mm. going to listen to it. Someone's going to have a takeaway and there's always a takeaway, there is. you know, and, um, I always say God is love. So if I'm loving it's speaking, um, that's, you know, that's it. That's it. Yeah, exactly it. And this is what it's about. And that's why I love doing these platforms. I love this because I learn from everyone who comes on my shows, but just for other people to realize like, oh my gosh, like look at how much he can do. You know, life is not over at 50 or, or past 50. It's not, it's just again. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all don't know, I was there. He looks exactly the same that he did in junior high school. <laughs> he has not changed <laughs> at all. <laughs> All right. So, I, I, I'd I mean, love to believe that, that, but thank uh, you. <laughs> yes, you have not aged at all. And it's just like, it shows, people don't understand, you show your life on you. Like, you could look at a person and know they had a good, they have a good life or they have a hard life. You could see it in their skin. Sure. Like, see it on them. Yeah. And, well, people think you can't. Yes, you can. You can. You can. You can. You can. Um, you know, life, your lifestyle also is a reflection of, of sometimes, you know, how you are. And, you know, I try to live, a, a tr I try mm -hmm. and I do try to live a healthy lifestyle. You know, I'm a vegan plant-based diet, not, not to say that that's the way you got to go, but mm -hmm. for me, it's been vital and energizing and eight and a half years strong now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I get my, my glass of wine. I get my drink on it. You know, I have my fun and all of that, but I try to get, live a nice balanced life, mm -hmm. but a lot of work, a lot of work. And I allow myself a little bit of play and disconnect because you have to recharge. You um, have to, you, you definitely have, have to. to. So and, and the key sometimes oh. also, you know, sometimes you do have to say no, just because you just have to take care of yourself. You gotta recharge. You can't do it all and be all to everyone. Um, you know, being in the design industry as an interior designer, it has given me a lot of opportunities like the George of the Rescue Show and many other things and other organizations to be able to contribute. The design industry has also helped me evolve as a charitable giver, giving mm -hmm. back. Uh, because the design community that I'm part of here in New York or nationwide, nationwide is a given community. We, mm -hmm. we do all different types of charitable work. We do tabletop, tablescape events for American Cancer Society. We do uh, the Bailey House, which provides housing for AIDS and HIV, housing works. Mm -hmm. All these organizations, charitable um, organizations, uh -huh. and I've been privy to evolving as a giver. Through, um, with these organizations and that's and then just the interior design so so where you see yourself in five years david oh my goodness please from your mouth to god's ear i have no idea but i'll tell you this much <laughs> i'll tell you this much okay. i will definitely um have more music in my life that much i know what okay. I'm, I'm at a place in my life where it's i'm pivoting towards what i want to do i want it to bring joy to my life um mm -hmm. more meaningful i don't know for all of my clients who may be watching this i don't always want to be running around for that towel bar anymore to finish the bathroom or the hardware i want the bigger picture uh, right. you know i see television maybe coming my way and utilizing my design talent maybe music um mm -hmm. and definitely i think later on utilizing my music and design to going into theater, set design, production, maybe directing. Um, but this, you know, interior design as my business and how I got started to where I'm at, mm -hmm. quite a journey, you know, um, and it keeps evolving. The most, the one thing that I can give you that I've always maintained is mm -hmm. a sponge-like attitude of absorbing and mm -hmm. staying hungry and an appetite for wanting to always 
have more and think forward. Always satisfied because you got to be satisfied. Um, but right. I'm always thinking, you know, how can I grow as a person, as a businessman, as a, a you know, a humanity, humanitarian of life, recycling, right. <laughs> just you know, all these things, you know, giving back, having a quiet moment with me and the Bible and, and, and the good Lord above all these things. Spiritual mm -hmm. growth is important also. It is. And that never stops. Literally yeah. never stops. And you said something that you hit on earlier in, in, in your um, talk. You said, I didn't know who I was. Yeah. And that, I, if, if you ever watch my show, I always drive into that because a lot of the problems that we have with ourselves or who, what we want to do in life, it stems from not knowing who you are. Right. If you don't know who you are, how can you love anyone else? If you don't know who you are, if you don't love yourself, how can you give to somebody, give to someone else? Like that's where you got to kind of back it up and figure yeah. that out because that will solve a lot of your issues. Like the issues will literally like disappear because when you stand in your truth, you're able to decide what you want to do with yourself, how you want to do it, who you want to be with, who you want to hang out with. Like everything revolves around you knowing who you are. Because when you don't, you kind of just float around, right? You just float to these people, float to that thing, do that job. You just want to check. You don't really think about it. And when you start doing all the pilot, that's the problem. Yeah. And then you kind of bump heads because now you're like just living a life, but you're not living the life you want to live. Just like you said, you yeah. know how, what kind of life you want to live. You said, look, I don't know where it's going to head, but I can tell you this much. I want to be in this place. I want to be in peace. I want to be centered. I want to be, so you know what you want. Yeah. You just got to kind of figure out that middle part of how it's going to happen, but you do know what you want. That's a, that's a big part of what a lot of people don't know. But you don't, sometimes, you know, sometimes it just takes, I call it evolution, you know, the journey. Sometimes the journey leads you to a path of, by def, you know, of definition. You start mm -hmm. walking, you know, when I got involved in the industry with, you know, window treatments and fabrics, I never thought I was going to be become and evolve into a dear interior designer the journey of one step and one talent and led me to the other you know being a, a fabric and a window treatment specialist quote unquote led me to a position in new york um on madison avenue which mm -hmm. opened the doors to the interior design world i didn't know i was going to fall in love with it but i was there and then mm -hmm. i learned you know w working new york city i evolved as a designer and one thing led to another and another right. so all these and then suddenly i'm just like getting all this well-rounded education of i call it the natural evolution of design because i'm not formally trained in design but i learned it through um through through work and right and different so i didn't know i was going to end up being a, des a designer and when i got there i was like wow i didn't see this coming and things right. like that and then it just took me to the next level um, I never set out to be an interior designer, ever. I thought I was going to be an actor. <laughs> I thought I was going to be on television. I was getting caught up in that whole Hollywood thing. Mm -hmm. And look where I'm at. It took, I'm still on stage, but two different stages. And mm. I'm going to, I'm going to, which just really brought me to something. Okay, go ahead. In our yearbook, I remember yeah. writing a quote, something to the effect, the world's a stage. And it's, uh, and we are all actors. It's up to us to decide who we are and what part we're going to play. And it's, oh, kind of, you know what? There you As go. I look to my right, I have my yearbook. <laughs> There's a quote in there by me somewhere by, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a page that we all had quotes. We all yes. had quotes. It was so a page that we all the, had quotes. I think I'm on the bottom right on the, I, I, somewhere. It's something to that effect. And it's, it's exactly that, you know? Um, some and people know that she said it in the yearbook. Yeah. And look at that. I guess maybe I did know who I was going to be. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, your purpose, My your purpose. purpose was there. Yeah. But at that age, you couldn't, like you just said, absorb. You wasn't yeah. able to absorb it because you didn't even know where you was at in life right there. Yeah. So it's, you kind of had an idea of what, like you said, you were still in the realm of what you wanted to be. You're yeah. not, you know, you're not on 21 Jump Street, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you are on different stages. Yeah. You know, your, 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 your purpose is still there. It's just on a different stage, like you said. It really you know? is. I mean, come on, opera. You're on opera stages. Uh, yeah. Come on, you can't beat that. I can't, you know, I, it's, it's a wonderful thing, you know, music and theater. 
and I got involved with it also because I love the idea of of telling a story through someone else's words and music and it and kind of just escaping and traveling for a couple of hours on stage. But yeah, it's you're right. I'm on I'm definitely on different stages. This is a stage for us, you know, mm-hmm. for you, yourself and, my, and myself. So yes, I, I do. stage in the literal sense could be redefined. Um, these are platforms that we have that you mm-hmm. and I get to share and experience and talk about. Um, but having that little moment about that quote, I haven't thought about that since I wrote it. Wow. And it just it just manifested. Um, so, you know, destination unknown sometimes. Wow. But I give kudos to the ones that know who they are, what they want, and they go for it right out right out of the gate. Good for them. Yeah. You know? I know it's like when they like what you see, but you know, like you said, everybody's journey is different. We all have our own. It's like I always say, it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. Like there's no, there's no like you have to be here at this at this age, or you got to be there at that age. It's not anything about that. You got to be where you have to be, where your mindset is at at that time. Like I couldn't have done this at 25 or 35 years old. Yeah. My mindset wasn't there yet. Like right. I had to be in a place that my mind was at. So that's understandable. And so I'm going to tell my audience, um, we went to Teaneck High School in Teaneck, New Jersey. And something about Teaneck, and we had a show about it uh, about a year and a half ago. Something about Teaneck, it's hard to describe Teaneck to people. When I try, it's so hard because it's so special. And and we are just like a melting pot of like different people from different places and different religions and different, um, it's like, we just, but when we together, it's so much love. It's so much love. We love on each other so much, right? So yeah. living a teenage is like, it, it, it's kind of funny. Like we're expected to do good. Like if you, if you do like, oh, David, he's on opera. Yeah. Like, Okay, like I, I expected that. Like I, you expect greatness from us. Like it's not like a oh my gosh. It's like oh, I, I knew he was gonna do something. I saw it already. Regina, you you said something that's really wonderful, and um, I've been talking about really more importantly the last couple of years of my life, mm-hmm. and it was growing up in Teaneck. How lucky were we that we were so diverse? We grew up being the United Colors of Benetton. <laughs> we never thought about diversity the way it's talked about today we no. lived it even with our black door and white door latin door and, and crazy all the doors remember T- oh high yeah school. yeah yeah i know but teaneck high school was in, in a, a melting pot you nailed it it was a multicultural diverse wonderful way to grow up and now in my design world we're talking about bipoc black indigenous people of color and all these we talk about diversity and I've been given a platform to utilize my Spanish cultural heritage, my indigenous mm-hmm. roots, and mm-hmm. give it a voice. And I never knew that I had a voice or <laughs> it needed a voice. Right. And now I'm talking about, I talk about my experience growing up in, in, in Teaneck. I said, you know, I grew up, everyone was the same to me. Everyone was family, friends. Not sometimes we didn't get along, but my point oh, is- Oh, that's just being, that's just being kids though. It was yeah. a melted, exactly. We were kids, but it was the melting pot. You are so right. And I feel very honored and privileged to grow up where the way we did oh. with the amount of love and the harmony that we have in our class and our classmates, because what a wonderful time it was. It um, was. And it was I don't amazing. miss a beat to talk about that time. And I said, yeah. oh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is how I grew up. <laughs> and it's like, everybody's like, where's this world at? Like, where is this? I said, let me tell you, the best way to say it is the Cosby kids. Like, we were yeah. the Cosby kids. Like, there was not, like, you know, I know there's racism in this world and everything, but I'm honestly, because I can honestly say we did not have that in school. We did not have situations in school that was a racist thing. Never. No. Never. Never. <laughs> Never. I love that you brought that up because. I, I just always said to myself, I'm going, how are we here? I mean, I always knew there was. It's there, but home. how do we get here to like today? Yeah. Because honestly, I believe like, you know, our class reunions and the next one will be in, in June of next year, June of next year. Yeah. So um, <laughs> every time we get along, it's like a major thing. I'm like, oh, it's a class reunion. Like everybody comes, people come from all over the world, all over the country to come. And it's like a big thing because that's the weekend you actually could live that again. We could yeah. live that, that stress-free, not to worry about all that stuff. And we just love each other. And, and it's like an amazing feeling because we go back to 88 every time, right? 
88, wasn't it? Wasn't it 98? I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Look, stop telling everybody my age. <laughs> no, no, no. I, listen, I'm proud. I am so proud. I'm like, I own it, you know? 88 I, is great. 88 yeah, is great. It really was. I loved, I loved growing up when we did. And it was such a wonderful time. It was on the cusp of, you know, things changing and evolving worldwide. Mm -hmm. But we still had that. I want to just say that childhood innocence. You know, there, was, know. A, there was a sensibility and it was quite simple. It wasn't that complicated. It was life was a little simpler. And we had surrogate mothers and fathers and uncles oh. all in our communities. Everybody yeah. was a dad or a father, mother figure. And we grew up that way. It was wonderful. wonderful. And, it, and it's still, you know, even like if something happens to my parent, I'm calling, you know, because they're part of my childhood, you know, they're part of my childhood. And I like without these parents that were like watching over, you know, we spend the night at everybody's house. He was always spending the night at somebody's house. So like these people like took that parenting role and you was like, oh my gosh, they like my parents. Yeah. Because they really was embedded in my life. So I totally get it. And I said that T Nuggets a special place. So David, I love you so much. I, I thank love you too, honey. This show. And before we leave out, can you give us something like what's coming up? You know, something we should look out for. Sure. So I okay. Um, I don't know when this is going to air, but I am working on an opera in West Palm Beach that is um it's veterans based i play the, the i sing the role of a young warrior and mm -hmm. the cause and the mission behind it is to support ptsd and for, uh, suicide prevention Ooh, okay. veterans yeah so th that's a wonderful cause i've got the races for faces happening in september and then um i've got you know industry events that i'll be posting and mm -hmm. I'm November travels will bring me to high point. I'm going to come try to see you. I'm oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'm coming down to the Carolinas. So that'll be in October. And then um, I've got Dallas in January for the light show. But we'll be connected and we'll share information. And I want to know what's going on with you so we can design it, sing it, and pay it forward and all these wonderful talking. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Especially giving back. I definitely, as everybody see, I've been playing um, David's information on the bottom of the screen. So you have all his contact information. He does it all. You know, you need it. He got it. So please contact him and he would definitely be able to assist you. So David, just hold on one second. And I would like to say to everyone, thank you for joining us for Let's Talk 1943. I'm your host, Regina Smithwick. And we had David Santiago. That has been an amazing gift to our show today. And so to next time, God bless. Love you.